Before I do start this video, make sure to use my TCG player affiliate down below if you're looking for any of these singles that I talk about today. Also, this channel is sponsored by Arcane Fortress. If you're looking for the best deck boxes around, make sure to use my link down below in the description to check them out. One other way you can support the channel is by becoming a patron. There are some great benefits of being a patron to the channel, such as giveaways, deck advice, and more when you do join. Hey what's going on YouTube, this is Devon coming back at you with another video today on Pups on PMTG and in this video today I'm going to go over Satya Aetherflux Genius as a commander itself. I'm not focusing on a commander pre-con upgrade with this specific video. I wanted to build this commander completely from scratch because it's absolutely powerful at what it does and I'm actually pretty interested in building myself because a lot of different strategies can take place with this commander. So let's first read what it does. So for one blue, red, and a white, it's a legendary creature, human artificer, menace, and haste. It does have a three five body whenever it does attack create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy up to one other target non-token creature you control you get two energy counters at the beginning of the next end step sacrifice that token unless you pay an amount of energy equal to its mana value so the reason why i do like this is because i love tokens i love etbs i love death triggers and this just kind of fits the bill perfectly and i am going to talk about some energy support as well mainly because we're an energy deck we might as well store those counters so that we can keep some of those cards that we did put on the battlefield so with that that said, let's get started. I first want to discuss energy counters mainly because our commander synergizes with them. Surprisingly, a lot of creatures enter the battlefield with energy counters, for example, Amped Raptor and Electrostatic Pummeler. I like both of these options. Amped Raptor, I personally like a little bit more. It has like a cascade effect if you pay into energy when you do cast it. And with the other option, it enters the battlefield with three energy counters, and it does have the ability if you pay three energy counters, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is its power. So the more energy you do have, the bigger this threat can become. I am Pointing out a lot of cards that are in the pre-con, I did want to focus on Gonti's Aether Heart and Aetherworks Marvel. These are excellent because in some sort of way they do synergize with our commander. For example, Aetherworks Marvel, whenever a permanent you control is put into a graveyard, you get an energy counter. So that's perfect. If we sacrifice one of our creatures that we made a copy of, it just goes to the graveyard and we'll get an extra energy counter off of that. And with that tap ability paying six energy counters, we can look at the top six cards of your library and cast a card for free, basically. So of course this does synergize with your commander. Also, Gonti's Aether their heart does as well whenever it or another artifact enters the battlefield under your control you get two energy counters and you can get an extra turn if you pay into that energy obviously you will have to sacrifice Gonti's aether heart but if you want an extra turn you can use that but there are some big boys like aether tide whale and aether squall ancient both of them are fantastic aether squall ancient does have that at the beginning of your upkeep you get three energy counters and if you do have enough of them you can return all other creatures to their owner's hand activate only as a sorcery unfortunately this will also affect us too so if we have some tokens on the battlefield field they basically get removed from the game but this can be useful in those clogged up board states later in the game an aether tide whale is really just there to give us six energy counters we can make a copy of it we'll enter the battlefield with six energy counters and we can pay into that ability because it's exact mana cost but if we don't want to keep it that's fine we could just store all that energy for another creature on the battlefield follow also gave a lot of energy support in jeskai colors too i did want to mention rex cyberhound there are also some other fallout cards that are in the 99 in the deck list down below in the description this is the only one that i'm going to talk about today because it's fun it deals combat damage to a player they mill two cards and you get two energy counters you could also pay two energy counters and have like an agatha soul cauldron ability only for rex though so overall this is just a pretty consistent engine when we do attack we do get two energy counters if anything else also we could just steal activated abilities of our opponent's graveyards i did also want to focus on a new card from modern horizons 3 with wrath of the skies for x and two white you get x energy counters then you may pay any amount of energy destroy each artifact creature and enchantment with mana value less than or equal to the amount of energy paid this way. I think this is an extremely versatile and important card in the deck because it acts as a board wipe for all artifact creatures and enchantments that are on the battlefield essentially. Of course it depends on how much you do pay into that X ability but say for example you have 10 mana you pay into that X ability you get 10 energy counters you don't have to pay the 10 energy counters if you wanted to pay three energy counters to destroy like part of the board you can do that and keep the rest of the energy. There is another fun option that you 
can take advantage of with a new Modern Horizons 3 card, and that's Volatile Stormdrake. This is going to be a fun card mainly because we can steal somebody's creature, of course depending on if we pay into the energy counters, but when we do we can just take that creature on our side of the battlefield, make a token copy of it with our commander when we do attack, and so this is again just a fun way where we can get energy and also use our opponent's creatures against them. But now let's take advantage of ETB triggers when we're making extra token copies with our commander, we could get extra ETB value. So of course, obviously you could add in Dockside Extortionist. Okay, that's the boring answer, let's focus on something else. A more fun answer, however, would be Terror of the Peaks, one of my favorite cards of all time. A Warstorm Surge effect will be brilliant in this deck, whether we make a token copy of Terror of the Peaks or another creature, we could just blast somebody in the face. And of course, the more copies of Terror of the Peaks we do have on the battlefield, the more we're gonna just blast everybody in the face, and I absolutely love that. But when we are making token copies, we might as well include some token doublers, for example, Ozure, Tok, Deepest Foundation, Mondrak, Glory Dominus, and Annoyed Procession. That way, when we make a token copy of a creature, we can make an additional copy and then get some extra value if they do have ETB or death triggers. Because our commander is from Kaladesh, I would be remiss if I didn't put in the Gear Hulks. Each one of these are fantastic in the deck, each have great ETBs. Cataclysmic Gear Hulk is removal. We can cast a free spell from our graveyard with Torrential Gear Hulk. And lastly, with Combustible Gear Hulk, we could draw cards or deal a lot of damage to our opponents depending on what they choose. Any one of these would be a perfect card in the deck. I did want to mention Felidar Guardian, another card from Kaladesh. When this enters the battlefield, you exile another target permanent you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Again, if we do have a lot of ETB creatures in this deck, we could copy this card with our commander and then get an extra ETB off of something else too. So that is pretty good utility. Another great card I did want to highlight is Moonshaker Cavalry. This one is an expensive card, mostly mana cost wise when it enters the battlefield creatures you control gain flying and gets plus x plus x until end of turn wax is the number of creatures you control it can be a great late game finisher if you have a lot of tokens on the battlefield you could just play a moonshaker cavalry and then make an extra token copy when you do swing in with your commander basically buffing them up twice and give them double flying for some reason but now let's focus on another cycle of cards with the cavalier cycle cavalier of dawn cavalier of flame and cavalier of gales these three are probably the most synergistic out of the rest of the cards that i talk about today because they do have an etb trigger and also a death trigger. For example, Cavalier Dawn does remove a target permanent on the battlefield and they make a 3-3 golem creature token on the battlefield and if it does die you return a target artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Cavalier of Flame, my personal favorite, can give your creatures plus one plus zero and haste and when it does enter the battlefield you discard any number of cards and draw that many cards and when it does die it deals x damage to each opponent and each planeswalker they control where x is the number of land cards in your graveyard. And lastly with Cavalier of Gales, it has the ETB of a brainstorm and when it does die you shovel into its owner's library then scry two. So again very synergistic with our commander we want to get ETB triggers and if we don't want to keep the token on the battlefield by paying the energy counters on them we could just let them die. And after just saying that it just kind of makes me sad just letting things die but the death triggers are too good. Speaking of death triggers I feel like this is pretty fun to talk about and knowing that it's in Jeskai color combination and no black mana is going to be used in this deck. I first want to point out Reef Worm. This is an incredible death trigger. So this one will scale with the game if reef worm does die you're gonna make a 3-3 on the battlefield and if that 3-3 died on the battlefield you make a 6-6 and then when the 6-6 dies you'll make a 9-9 with us swinging with our commander and not paying into that energy cost sacrificing reef worm we could consistently make those fish tokens and eventually make it up to those 9-9 kraken tokens and of course if we do have those token doubling effects this will just get exponentially crazy another example of death triggers would be worm coil engine this has an incredible death trigger of making two 3-3s one with lifelink and one with death touch this on the battlefield though with death touch and lifelink with a 6-6 body is going to be incredible if we do make an extra token copy of it we could swing away get some life gain with that six damage and then go ahead and make those worm tokens another fun option that will disrupt our opponents is balor this has an incredible death trigger it also does have an attack trigger so on attack or dice trigger target opponent draws three cards then discards three cards at random target opponent sacrifices a non-token artifact and balor deals that much damage to target opponent equal to the number of cards in their hand so if we're constantly having this die the extra token copy we could just really screw with each of our opponents of course if we really want to apply some serious damage flaming tyrannosaurus is excellent for that job we're not really casting things from exile i mean if we do have some of that synergy we could easily do that and deal three damage and continuously buff up flaming tyrannosaurus but i mainly like it for that last ability whenever it does die it deals damage equal to its power to each opponent so if we have this on the battlefield with our commander each time we swing away with it we can make an extra token copy then later on we could just deal five damage to everybody in the face and that's what i call extreme value other death trigger cards i did want to 
to highlight are the Kamigawa dragons like Ao, Atsushi, and Carry. Each of these do have those modal options when they do die. Ao has the biggest hex of them all. Look at the top seven cards of your library. Put any number of non-land permanent cards with total mana value four or less from among them onto the battlefield. Or you can put two plus one plus one counters on each permanent you control that's a creature or vehicle. Atsushi will get you three treasure tokens or exile the top two cards of your library. And then Carry, when it does die, return any number of target non-land permanents with total mana value of six or less to their owner's hands. Or mill six cards and return up to two instant or sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand. So the one big downside though is the fact that they are legendary but really we're gonna get the death trigger nonetheless when we do attack with our commander but each of these have super powerful death triggers and that's why I did want to include them in the list. But this is also an aggressive deck we want to attack with our commander so that we can make extra token copies of creatures we do have on the battlefield that are swinging and hitting our opponents. So again going to another cycle of cards the ancient dragons are going to be another great fit in this deck. Ancient gold dragon will make a lot of tokens on the battlefield for us. Ancient copper dragon will make a lot of treasure tokens and ancient silver dragon will give us a lot of card draw. So with our commander out we could swing away make an extra token copy of one of these get some extra value. In a weird way this kind of feels like pseudo haste like if we have a creature go onto the battlefield we could just swing in with our commander make an extra token copy that's attacking. But again these are going to be game warping depending on what you roll. But if you do want to get into some infinite combats there are some various cards that you could take advantage of for example combat celebrant, port razor, and lightning runner. And each in their own way will have a specific scenario where you need some setup. For example with combat celebrant you need to have a way to give it haste so that you could exert it so that you could untap all creatures you control and then have that extra token copy enter the battlefield so that you could exert that one and go back and forth until you basically get infinite combats that way. With port razor it's not as complicated of course you do need to connect with each port razor you do make a token copy of and in that way you could get an additional combat phase for each one you do make and swing away and connect with. And the one that would need the most setup would actually be lightning runner mainly because when it attacks you get two energy counters then you may untap pay eight energy counters if you pay untap all creatures you control after this phase there's an additional combat phase you are halfway there with lightning runner and seta producing four energy counters all you really need to do is to make four energy extra so whether that be by swinging in with creatures that make four total energy or if there's a creature that has a big etb like that one whale where it makes like a lot of energy you can make a copy of that with seta's ability on every single combat so with that that's pretty insane there's three ways where we could possibly get infinite combats of course they're very specific scenarios and I don't think they're going to be likely coming up that much unless you're talking about Port Razor. However, that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on Satya Aetherflux Genius. This is one of my favorite commanders of the entire set, one that I'm definitely going to probably be building myself because I love ETBs, I love death triggers, and I love combat, and I love focusing on dealing a bunch of damage to everybody. So this is a perfect commander for me. Let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts and opinions about this commander. Do you plan on building it from scratch or buying the precon itself? I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Also make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And with that out of the way, thank you for stomping by.